Hello, in this presentation, we will talk about how to export reports to Excel, including a profit and loss balance sheet and transaction reports by date. If you've been following along with us, that's great. We will be continuing on the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will demonstrate how to export reports to Excel. If you have this backup file, you can restore it by going to File and Restore the Company. That will bring you to the point that we are at now and uh, we'll be able to see the same data on the transaction report. If you're following through the data set, you should have the same information on uh, the transaction reports as we process them. The one in particular we want to take a look at is the transaction report by date. That's going to be a really good comparison to see what we have done through this process and whether or not we've had any problems with the process if everything ties out within the, these reports. So I'm going to open up the open windows on this side so we can toggle through the reports that we will be creating. In order to do that, we're going to go to the view at the top, drop down, and open a window list. And there are our windows that we want to have open. I'm going to go ahead and just keep the home tab open at this time. It's all you need to have open and we'll generate these reports as we go. So we have the balance sheet here. And then I'm going to open up the company home tab. So this is going to be our starting point, typically our starting point, only having the home page open. We're going to start out by taking a look at the balance sheet, then move to the profits and loss, then the transaction report. So let's go to the reports up top. We're going to go down to company and financial, scrolling down to the balance sheet. I'm going to change the date range. I'm going to go over to this side to change the range to the current period we are working on 010117 or 010121 January 1st 2021 to 1231-21 December 31st 2021. We're going to say okay. Now I typically like to look at the balance sheet first when we're analyzing this data because the balance sheet is the double entry accounting system. It is the accounting equation. It is assets equal liabilities plus equity. And so that's the first place I like to say, hmm, is there something wrong on the balance sheet? We can take and tie our data here to any data if you're working along with this problem and see if there's any problems, any differences uh, between what I'm showing here to what we have in the problem. That's going to be our first indication that there's a problem and then really we can drill down on it here in the auto zoom function and or we can go to the transaction report as we will do shortly and those are two locations that we can really drill down and see what the issue is if there's any problems now of course the checking account is a common place where we could be off because there's so many transactions within the checking account so again if there's numbers different if you're going through this problem and you see a different number than this 94 436 you can drill down on that and here's the data so you can tick and tie off this data here and see if it matches if it doesn't match often it's the case that there's a date problem so you want to might want to go down and extend the date and bring the date back into the past and see if there's any added data that is included in your data set this problem we have worked on this is the only period we have worked on therefore if there's anything outside this date range probably a date problem <laughs> and you probably want to bring it within uh, this date range and that might solve the problem. So the best way to check this kind of stuff is just to tick and tie it all out and also look at the split account to see which other account is involved in this. Then we're going to close this back up. We can do the same for every other transaction. So here's accounts receivable, inventory, uh, prepaid insurance, short term investment, uh, undeposited funds, total current uh, assets. Also helpful when you're checking data like this to maybe start from the total. Start at the total current assets down here. If that balance is good, if it's in balance to what you see here, then you might, you're pretty good. You might want to go in and double check your data, but that's a good indication that your information is correct. If you're out of balance, of course, then you might want to go to the subcategories, including the uh, total current assets and then uh, and the total long-term or property plant and, and equipment and check those subtotals and then drill down if there's something wrong on those subtotals then go back into the data and that might be the most efficient way to go through the data and see what has been uh, incorrect or what needs to be picked up so here's going to be the liability side we've got the liability same idea you might want to go to 
total liabilities and equity and then take a look at the totals and total uh, total liabilities then total current liabilities see if those tie out and if they don't then go back into the data including the visa card in this case the payroll liabilities the sales tax the loan and uh, the owner equity now i'm not going to drill down on on any of these more but we will see more detail if you have some problems here when we go to the transaction uh, report by date that's really the best way to do a comparison when two people are entering data and you're trying to compare whether or not data has been entered properly on one account to another what we're going to do now is export this and practice the export process that will be located up here in the excel sheet so we're going to go to uh, create a new worksheet this is the first time we have exported the excel so we're going to create a new workbook and then after that we're going to just keep on posting to the existing workbook so we're going to say uh, export and it should open up a new excel sheet and it should export this data to one tab of that new excel sheet that will then be opened here we go here's the new excel sheet that has been generated we see the new tab down here i'm going to double click on that tab and rename it we're going to call it a balance sheet and uh, we could increase the size of this sheet like so and note that the header is not here but there is a header if we go to the uh, page layout section over here you will then and go ahead it's going to unfreeze pane so we'll have to deal with that but we're going to say look at that and uh, if we scroll up top we should have a header but i'm going to unfreeze the panes so we can see that to do that we're going to go to the view tab and in the windows group there's a uh, pane split panes we're going to unsplit that and that allows us to see the header so the header does export it's in the header function which you cannot see in the normal view going back to the normal view of excel so there's going to be our data to excel i'm going to save this workbook so that when we print the next two reports we can export it to the same excel workbook and it'll create two more worksheets within the workbook in order to do that we're going to go to the file tab we're going to say save as I'm going to browse look for where we want to save this as now we have the location i'm going to save it as uh, section 7 in this location that's going to be the name of the workbook so i'm going to say save and we're going to say follow feature that's okay i'm going to say yes and there we have that now i'm going to close this back out and we're going to go to the next report that being the profit and loss so close that out we're going to go to the profit and loss so i'm going to go to reports up top and scroll on down we're looking for company and financial and we're looking for the profit and loss standard changing the date ranges from 0101 21 to 12 31 21 there is our data now to just measure and check to see if that we're on the same page and entering data if you've been following along with the problem best place to start is the net income and see if we have the same net loss in this case for uh, this time period and if that is um, the case, then that's a good indication that we're, we're on uh, the same page in terms of the data. If not, then go through each uh, item, item, line item, starting with uh, merchandising sales, uh, services, cost of goods sold, and then the expenses and see what is not tying out there. I'm not going to drill down and look at the GL for each data set. If you had two data sets you were comparing, of course, then the best way to check that would be to say hmm if this number is different than what we have let's do an auto zoom on each of those and check the transaction detail check basically the general ledger and see if we have the same detail making up this bottom line number and uh, then if not then you want to go through and probably check and see if it's a date problem and put the date in the past put the date in the future and see if you have a date issue and then i'm going to close this back out for us we're going to we're going to print this out remember that if there is a problem we're going to check the transaction report by date and that'll show us all the activity so that's really where in these types of things we can go back through it and see uh, where the where the detail is and take and tie off from that report so we're going to export this report this time to the same sheet the same excel workbook that we had set up in the prior so we're going to go to excel we're going to go to create new worksheet that's going to be a new worksheet 
within the workbook, but the workbook we're going to make is in an existing workbook this time, an existing workbook. Then when we browse, it's probably going to take us, well, it didn't this time. It took me to another location. So the first time you go to the existing workbook, you're going to have to find that workbook. Mine's in section seven. Once we find the workbook, we're just going to double click on the workbook or click it one time and select open, whichever you choose to do. And then we're going to go ahead and export. And once that happens, it should open up that pre-existing workbook and then add the new tab with this information being exported to that new tab. So here we have it. Note that it put the new tab before the prior tab. I'm going to want it afterwards, so I'm just going to drag it. I'm going to click on it and drag it over. And I also want to get rid of the split screen I f a feature that they always put on there when it exports. And so we're going to go to the uh, view and I'm going to go to windows and I'm going to unsplit that. So that feature is now unsplit. Then we can check and make sure the header is on there. So if we go to the page layout, which is going to be this little icon down there, we can see that the header still remains. And so going back to the normal view, we're going to now rename it. And I'm going to double click on the name and just call it P and L for profit and loss. And that will be that. So we're going to close this back out and we're going to do this one more time for the last report that we need to create. And that is going to be the transaction report by date. So we'll save that, save that. So we're going to go back to reports up top and we're looking for the transaction report by date, which is under the accounting and taxes accounting and taxes and we want the transaction reports transaction list by date we'll change the the date range from 010121 to 123121 the current range we are looking at and this will give us a detail of everything that we did during this time period so it's going to give us the type of item that we did whether it be a check a transfer an invoice a payment the date that it happens, the number, uh, the name, whether that be vendor, customer, uh, employee, and we have the memos, we have the account, and then we have the split, meaning what other account is affected, and then we have the amounts. This is really the report that you really want to tick and tie out. If there's a problem, you want to uh, check each of these numbers and see if there's anything missing, meaning if it's on this worksheet and not the one you're working with then we'll probably need to add it or see if there's a date problem change the dates and see if it has been entered outside the date range and if there's something on your worksheet that's not here then the question is should it be there do you need to delete that is there a duplicate and do we need to delete those so i'm just going to go through this one by one just real quick here so just so you can see these there's a 65 well let's do this one by one negative 12 thousand negative sixteen thousand negative sixty five thousand fifty thousand negative seven thousand four hundred four hundred thirty fifty cents three hundred ninety nine five thousand seven thousand five hundred eight thousand four hundred and twenty uh two hundred and eight six hundred and twenty eight twenty thousand five hundred negative four hundred negative five ninety eight five twenty five eight hundred and sixteen and twenty seven cents 430 and 50 cents scrolling down 525 955 and 50 cents negative 11,000 negative 500 negative 620 negative 360 negative 15,000 negative 3,539 and 33 cents negative 630 100 and 200 if there's any problems with those then then drill down on those and see what the item is and uh, see if you can locate the problem for those items if anything is out of order then that's okay it might just be a date thing but if it's within this range so for example if this date you have this transaction of this 20,500 but it's dated uh, on a different date such as the 25th or, or something like that it got grouped somewhere else then as long as it's in this date range, it probably won't be throwing off your reports, including your balance sheet and your income statement. But you might want to go back in there and change the dates anyways. If, however, the date range is outside of the date range we processed here, then it, it will have an effect and you'll want to make sure to pull it back in and that might be something that will solve the problem. That's probably one of the most common 
problems is is a date problem and that's why uh quickbooks does have a feature that tells you when you're outside a date range but we turned that off in this problem because we were working in uh, 2021 so you can set ranges to help you with that problem when we work a problem like this however we are more susceptible <laughs> to a date problem so now that we have that we're going to export this to the same uh, location we had the prior ones so we're going to go to uh, excel and create new worksheet and we're going to put that however in an existing workbook it's already going to the correct location probably at this point because we just did this but we do want to double check that and it's it's not and <laughs> so we want to go to get great guitars we want to go to section seven and this will be the item we want double clicking on that exporting to that particular report and then it should open up the existing excel file it should create a new tab putting this data on the new tab and um here it is okay so here's the new tab sheet it's in the middle of the prior two that we have made i'm going to put my cursor on the tab drag it over to the right I'm going to double click on it rename it i'm going to call it transaction report and that's going that's good enough and there's that we're going to go to the view tab up top windows group and hit the split so remove the split then we can just double check that the header is there by going to the page layout view at the bottom this little icon there's the header note that if you print this of course it's not printing very well if you print it'll print on two pages we need to fix that if we are to print it so i'm going to go back to this normal view to do that you, you could go to the file and go to the uh, print options and try to figure out hmm how can i how can i make this better well one uh, I don't want the, the columns on two lines, so we could try to change the layout from a portrait to a landscape, and that'll fix part of it. It's still on two lines, however, so the, the next thing we could do is try to go out of here and see if there's anything that we can remove or shorten, meaning do I need all these lines? Could I delete some of these lines? Possibly I don't need these split lines in between, so if I wanted to clean this up, and try to make it a little smaller i might want to delete these I might highlight these and delete these lines so i'm just deleting the columns that have no data and you might want to do this anyways if you were to create a table with this data you would need to get rid of the lines that have nothing involved so you do want to clean some of this up and so we'll just delete all these and see if that is enough to bring it to one page wide and then if we go back to the file and we go to the print we can see that it is on one page now if it were not and that wasn't enough and that's all we could do we're like we can't do anything else your last resort is to scale it to fit on one page uh, you generally fit all columns on one page meaning i don't really mind if if the if these uh if it goes two pages long but we do typically mind if it goes two pages wide and we have to put two pages together for example to see the account column and how it lines up to this check so two pages so that would typically be this item here fit fit all columns to one uh all columns on one page meaning it could be two pages but i don't want the columns to be split so that's going to be just some options there we're going to save this and we're going to close this and that will be that